Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to class. This is week 13, and we're going to continue marching along in our class here. This week, we're going to be looking at the topic of ethical leadership. Now, it's no surprise, even the church world is not immune from ethical scandals and abuses in our ranks. I suppose this has been happening ever since the very beginning. Um, if you look at any of Paul's epistles to the churches, uh, you'll see that oftentimes there was things that were considered scandalous going on. And over the centuries, this has not, uh, this has not gone away. And so the challenge for church leaders is how do we manage, how do we lead in a way that will develop healthy ethical cultures? How do we ensure that uh, these types of things are not taking place not only in our own hearts, but our own churches? So we know it starts with us, uh, but it doesn't end with us. And so hopefully this week you'll get ideas for helping you think about ethics in a more comprehensive way and thinking about ethics in your organization in a more comprehensive way. And one of the, the, the basic frameworks that I like uh, from uh, Trevino and, and Brown have to do with uh, thinking about the distinction between a moral person and a moral manager. So one can be a moral person. They could you know, uh, have the right attitude, right frame of heart, uh, do, you know, have healthy behaviors and those sorts of things. They don't steal and cheat and lie and those sorts of things. Um, but then there's a sense where we have the obligation for the ethical outcome or culture of our organization. So are we ensuring that others in our organization are also behaving ethically? Uh, do we do we catch, not catch, but are we aware of things that are going on? Are our eyes open? Are we, are, we, are we going into our organizations with eyes wide open and we're okay with seeing and dealing with some of the ethical issues that we're gonna see? You know, what ends up happening in a lot of organizations is things start off small and then they sort of snowball. And before you know it, everybody's you know pointing fingers at each other. Well, it was his fault, it was her fault. But leadership really has to do with catching things that are small, modeling healthy uh, or ethical behavior to uh, folks, and then making sure that there's systems and processes that will catch and deal with any sort of ethical uh, lapses. So, you know, for Christians, we don't want to think that we have to legislate um, you know, morality in our organizations. You know, we're all saved by grace and, you know, we're not under the law. We understand all that. Um, however, there's still a certain extent to which we are responsible for the ethical behavior of people in our organizations. And so that doesn't mean legislating everything, right? Um, but it means modeling the right kinds of values and making sure that the people that, that work with us and that we hire and that work for us are also modeling the right kinds of ethical behavior. Because uh, as we know, culture has to do with the real lived out uh, expressions in our lives. It's not just a, a statement of, you know, values we put on a wall. Uh, it is how we live. It's how we behave. So we can have these expressions on the wall, you know, we're going to be upright and have good values and, you know, uh, all those sorts of things. But if we're not living them, we're not modeling them, then the ethics, uh, the culture of the organization co can go wrong. So being a, uh, an ethical leader is one thing, but being an ethical manager and ensuring that our organizations are ethical through the culture that we model and through the systems and practices that we put in place. So for example, are there ways to deal with people that are abusive? Uh, do we reward uh, the right kind of behavior, you know, and conversely, do we punish the wrong kind of behavior? Is there a process by which uh, people can report and, uh, and, and let us know when they see unethical behavior? Is there an open posture towards discussing uncomfortable things of an unethical nature? Are the leaders at the highest level being held accountable for their ethical behavior by their boards of directors? Uh, do they have enough, uh, you know, not whistleblowers, but people who are willing to say the right thing? Uh, a lot of big the challenge in the church is a lot of leaders surround themselves with a lot of yes men, right? People who are uh, unwilling to challenge what the top leader says. In a church is that, you know, is sort of compounded because, you know, we don't want to go against spiritual authority, but sometimes it's our responsibility to challenge and push back. You know, I mean, we can see examples of this in scripture. I mean, think about King David, right? 
I mean, he, was, he wasn't the priest, but he was to set the tone for all of Israel. He was the king, and he was to ensure that they were following the law. And so when David fell into sin, it was Nathan the prophet who came and you know, pointed that bony prophet finger and said, David, you were that man. And so David was cut to the heart, and you know, there was consequences, of course. But, but leaders need to, have, they need to have accountability. And so does the system ensure that there is accountability built in? Are there boards? Are there feedback loops for decision processes? Is there a way for people to spot and report and deal with uh, unethical behavior? Do we discuss these things? Do we have a culture that's just open to discussing uh, things? And again, this isn't an easy, comfortable topic, right? It's sort of like conflict in a sense. Nobody wants to deal with these things. But as, as mature Christian leaders, we have to be open to the realization that these things creep in even to the church. So, so how was that? That was pretty good, huh? So this week, you're going to have the opportunity to do a lot of good reading uh, from our textbook on this. There's been a wealth of uh, research and writing on this topic, and I think it's going to help you. Um, and of course, we know that our, our, our frame, our bedrock uh, set of values comes from scripture, right? But I think there's a lot that we can learn uh, as Christian. And I was, I was a little sad as I did some additional research to kind of find some materials for you guys. It was really sad that there was not a whole uh, wealth of information for pastors and uh, church leaders on how to develop healthy church culture. Uh, you know, I saw a lot on church scandals and things that have gone wrong, but really the church isn't talking about developing ethical cultures. It's the business world that's d talking about developing ethical cultures because they're the ones who have noticed it and it's been spotlighted. But even in the church, we know that there's ethical issues. So why not start a healthy, open conversation about this even in the church? So this week we're going to do that even in our small little class. We're going to do that. So, uh, so please engage the reading. There's some very uh, thought-provoking discussion questions, some great articles for you to read actually which have to do with ethics in the church and some of the current issues that have taken place. I want you guys to, to think about those and to put some thought to how we can think about and deal with those. Um, and how can we develop our own sense of being not just a, an ethical person, but an ethical leader? And then you're also continuing on with your personal assessments as we drive towards that final payment, uh, final project. I want to see some evidence that you guys are making good progress here of your own assessments, your own goal setting, and getting uh, some data from your outside raider, raiders. All right, so that's about it for this week. Look forward to working with all you guys. Blessings, we'll see you online.